Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I feel like I haven't sat here in weeks and made a video. Now, I know you haven't noticed that if you come to my channel frequently, and thank you very much if you do, but um, I haven't actually sat here in about two weeks because all the videos you've been seeing over the last two weeks I had previously recorded. And then last week we had this major snowstorm in Austin, lost power for a few days. We had a water problem. Ugh, it was terrible. Anyway, we're back to normal life. I'm in a short sleeve t-shirt and I feel fine. So life is good. I'm making videos again. Here we are. Today we're in Luminar AI and I'm talking about contrast and that's, um, well, you know, to me it's a big deal. I think I talk about contrast a lot, but you know, I've had people ask me like, how do you adjust contrast? That sort of thing. And there's some basic simple tools for it. There are some more complicated ways to do it. There's actually quite a few ways. And in this video, I'm talking about five different ways that I personally adjust contrast in Luminar AI. We're gonna hit that right now. Uh, the first way is in the Enhance AI tool, there's Accent AI. I've got this photo and there you go. I mean, I'm just gonna go to 100 just because it, it's not necessarily what I recommend, but it's a great example of uh, how contrast will work in the photo. So Accent AI, keep in mind that this does a whole lot more. It's not just doing contrast. They say that it does about a dozen different things. You know, it, it's, it's doing, you know, work on the exposure value, the shadows, the highlights. Um, it seems to be popping colors. It is popping contrast. It does a lot of things, but um, if you need a quick hit and you don't know what to do with your photo, uh, but you know, it's kind of flat and, you know, so contrast, by the way, is kind of the difference between uh, the, the the bright and the dark parts of the photo. When it's flat, it's really, um, well, kind of faded looking almost is the way I think of it. So um, I personally am a big fan. I like contrast in images. I think it makes the image kind of uh, come to life, for lack of a better word. So that's kind of why I'm talking about it. But anyway, Accent AI is a great tool for doing that. Keep in mind, as I said, it does a lot of other things. So if you're not looking for a whole lot of other things to go on in your photo, maybe that's not the tool for you. It's a great slider. It just depends on what you need. So I'm gonna hit reset and go on to the next one, which is the light tool. And here you've got a couple of different ways you can do it. The primary one that I do most of the time is smart contrast. So as you drag that to the right, you can see it is impacting the contrast of the image. Again, I'm going to 100, so it's visibly obvious to you. I don't recommend going to 100 all the time. That doesn't look too bad, but it's a little too dark. And that's what it's doing. It's creating a difference between dark and light. The other thing that's nice about smart contrast is it doesn't really drag a whole lot of color difference, which you will notice a lot of times in uh, contrast. Like a traditional contrast tools, you, uh, tool, you will see it pop the color quite a bit. Smart contrast is intelligent in that way. It doesn't offset your colors significantly. Now keep in mind, even though I'm just doing contrast here, it's not something that I would do by itself. Most images maybe require a little bit more. There may be some images that look really good, just need a slight bump in contrast and you're done. So you might come in here and you know, if you're starting at zero, you might say, oh, I just need a little bit. Uh, well, I'm at 50, that's not really a little bit, but there you go. Um, you can make an image look really nice if you're starting from a really solid starting point with just a little bit of contrast. Typically, I will do contrast, but I'll balance that with a little bit of highlights and shadows here. I might bump the exposure a tiny bit. Uh, I actually might pull down the shadows. That creates a little bit more contrast. Pull up the highlights, creates a little bit brighter area there. And my point is you can use other tools like highlights and shadows to impact contrast. And in fact, that's another way. It's not really one of the five that I typically do. But if you, let me just hit reset, you can play with just highlights and shadows. Brighten the highlights, darken the shadows, you're creating a little bit more contrast in the image. For me, it doesn't have quite the same pop as when you add in some smart contrast uh, on top of that or by itself. Anyway, highlights and shadows come into play. But the key thing here I'm talking about is smart contrast. That's the second tool that I use to impact contrast in an image. The third one, super powerful, super amazing, sometimes a little scary, and that is the curves tool, and that's right here. And I'm talking about just this primary dot. I've done uh, some deep dive videos on some of these tools, including curves. You may wanna check that out. I'll try to remember to put a link to it up there in that corner. But if you just uh, drop a dot there and pull that up, drop a dot here, whoa, uh, hit reset if you want. Uh, drop a dot there and pull that down. You can see I'm creating a bit of contrast in the image. That's called an S-curve. An S-curve is really designed to kind of pop your image a little bit. Um, and basically I'm brightening the bright parts, I'm darkening the dark parts, which is creating contrast. So that's what that does. You can come in and drop more dots if you want to further customize the look of this image. 
Maybe you want to do some other things. I'm just kind of hacking. I don't have a plan for this image, but you know, that doesn't look so bad. Maybe it's a little bit too dark down there. Maybe I want to pull that up a little bit. But if you look at the before and the after, there's the before, there's the after. Not bad. It still needs some work. The point is curves, super powerful, super amazing, really good at adjusting contrast. And the other thing that I'm not really talking about in this video is color contrast. And you can adjust those things here with these other uh, tabs that are on the curves tool. Again, talked about that in the deep dive video. I'm not going to talk about it here, but I wanted to be clear about that. There's additional components. I'm talking about traditional image contrast differences in light values, basically. So, so far, Accent AI is great, does other things. Smart contrast, really powerful. Recommend using that a lot. I use that on probably every image. Curves, super powerful, super amazing, can be a little intimidating if you're not familiar with it. Those are the top three. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is down here in the professional uh, category, and that is super contrast. And this is, as the name implies, it's really good and really powerful at adjusting contrast in an image. The thing that I think is so fantastic about it is it gives you the ability to separate contrast in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, as you can see over here. So I believe I did a deep dive video about this. If I did, I'll try to remember to link it there. I'm pretty sure I did, but super contrast is super powerful. It is a great tool. There's not a recipe, so to speak. It's not always do this or always do that. It's really a season to taste kind of thing. When I use this tool, which is you know reasonably frequently, what I end up doing is just moving the sliders around, seasoning to taste until I find something I like. So highlights, contrast, as you can see, it's creating more contrast in the highlights. Um, I might want to pull up midtones here. Usually what I do is I turn on each of these three categories by moving the sliders a little bit. And shadows, I'm not going to move very much because if you'll notice, that's brightening the shadows. So that's kind of reducing contrast in the shadows because they're already dark. So I'll just turn it on, but that's where the balance tool comes into play. And so once again, I will just start kind of experimenting uh, whether I want more or less highlights balance. I like less here because it's brightening those highlights. Let me check out the midtones. I'm going to go less as well. It's brightening those. And then shadows balance. If I go left or right, let's see. If I go left, it's kind of brightening those. So if I go to the right, I'm kind of darkening. I like that. I think that looks pretty nice. And again, I haven't used any other tools, just this one. So if I turn that off, there's the base image and there's the current image using just super contrast. So you can see it has a huge impact on the photo. But again, there's not a recipe. There's not always do this or always do that. I recommend experimenting with this tool and having to play with it and for sure experiment with the balance sliders under each one of these if you've used that tool because it can significantly impact how that looks in your image. And the last one that I like to use is Dodge and Burn. And I know I did a deep dive about that recently. I'll put it up there. It, it gives you the ability to lighten or darken specific parts of an image. So in this case, I'm going to go with a really big brush and I'm going to drop the strength to like 15 or something. Uh, and in fact, I think I'm going to make the brush even bigger and I'm just going to lighten the sky, right? So I'm going to come in here and just kind of brighten up the top of this photo. You can kind of see how that's looking. And then I think I'm going to do the same down here in the sky part of the reflection. I'm just trying to brighten up that bit of the photo and I'm going to go back up here and give that another, uh, another swipe or so. Um, so I brighten that a little bit and I'm going to go to dark and, and here I'm going to use a small brush size. And I'm going to use a strength of, you know, maybe 20 or something, maybe a little bit bigger brush size. And what I want to do is darken some of these trees and the reflection of the trees. And I, I'm making a mess here, to be honest. I'm not doing a really clean job uh, and I'm not even trying. So that's OK. I'm just kind of running through that really quickly. I'm going to give a little bit more over here just because I like that idea of kind of that that darkness in that forest. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that looks that great. It doesn't really. I, pr I would need to refine it. but. This is a video. We're all friends. You're not going to judge my sloppiness. Um, keep in mind that you have the overall amount slider, which is kind of a opacity slider for dodge and burn. So if you don't like it at 100%, maybe you do like it at 75. And so keep that in mind. But let me show you the impact of this tool because it has a huge impact on contrast. So there it is. Current state. There it is before. It's vastly different. It's much darker in the sky, much brighter in those areas around the trees and that sort of thing. And then when I turn this back on, you can see I basically flop the light around. I would say that the strength is too much in the trees. Um, I like it in the reflection and in the sky. But again, I was just kind of hacking. I'm going to hit reset and just get rid of that. 
But those are the five major tools that I like to use for adjusting contrast. Keep in mind that contrast exists in other tools as well. Dramatic, mood, things like that. They have contrast as well, which is going to impact your image. But personally, I do contrast early on in my image editing. I generally will start with uh, most images. I'll start with light and I will adjust smart contrast and then I might adjust highlights or shadows if I need to. And then I will go to like enhance AI and give that a little bump as well. And you can see how that's kind of kicking that image and give it a nice little pop. And then I will go from there. That's my usual routine, but every image is slightly different. And so there, there's not a, you know, always do this kind of thing, but I generally start with light unless it's a really dark image. I will start with enhance AI and just drag that to see what it does. And that might cause me to stick with that. Or if it's really dark and enhance AI has really helped, I might actually reset that to zero, go to light, brighten the exposure, then go back to accent AI. I'm all over the place in some regard with what I'm talking about because there's there's no right way to do anything. Experiment, have fun, do whatever you want. It's your image. You should be having fun. If you're not having fun, I hope that you can find a way to have fun because this is photo editing. It's photography. Hopefully it fills your soul like it does mine. It's just so much fun. Um, my key thing with image editing is always just experiment and see what you like. And if you like it, that's good enough, right? So I like this the way it is, to be honest. I use some Accent AI and some light with some smart contrast and a little bit of shadows, and that was it. And honestly, I don't feel like I need to really do anything else to this image, and uh, I'm satisfied. So simple, easy, powerful. There's five different ways that I've talked about in this video. Well, six if you count shadows and highlights, but there are lots of different ways. Let's say that in Illuminar AI to adjust contrast, but the five major ways that I like to use are the ones that I demoed here. Accent AI, uh, in the light tool, smart contrast and curves, then advanced contrast or super contrast is called now and dodge and burn. Experiment, have fun, do what you like. That's how I like to adjust contrast in Luminar AI. Hope it helps, hope it gives you some ideas, hope you're staying safe and you have power because it's no fun when you don't have power, trust me. And take care of yourselves, my friends. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Have fun editing. I'll see you next time and adios.